It's Dr. Kathy Miller here from Indiana University, coming to you from Indianapolis, one of the emerging hotspots of COVID-19. Though really, I think all of us have had our lives upended uh, in many, many ways by this pandemic. Rahm Emanuel is widely quoted as having said, never let a good crisis go to waste. What he meant by that is that this is an opportunity for us to do things differently, to do things we never thought we could do. In oncology here at Indiana University, this means we've had discussions about who would we continue to treat if we reached a point where we couldn't continue to treat everyone. Now, those are not easy discussions, but they've been useful ones to have. We've also thought about ways we could conserve resources without impacting outcome for our patients. And we've thought about new ways of delivering care. Now, undoubtedly, many of those changes are temporary. They are a short-term need because of this crisis of our resources and the need to keep our patients safe. But some of them should become permanent. Think of the innovations in telemedicine, the wider use of telemedicine, forcing us to think about who really needs a physical exam, who needs to be here, the way we administer clinical trials. If a drug is oral, could we ship the drug to our patients at their home rather than shipping it to our pharmacy and mandating that the patients physically come here to pick up their next supply? Could we give external monitors? electronic access to our clinical trial system so that they could monitor the data, help us ensure quality without physically being here. Now, those are things that we may have talked about a bit on the fringes and some places have tried to do them, but we've never really jumped in with both feet head into doing this work. I predict that there will be huge advances in implementation science that could come from this crisis if we're willing to follow that path. I'll give you an example. Yesterday I saw two new patients for consultation via virtual visits. Now, in reality, if the patients had been in my office, I would have examined them, um, though I would have acknowledged that I was examining them more out of convention and that that's what I am supposed to do, and that's embedded in our billing codes more than the fact that there was something I was going to glean from that physical exam that would change the recommendations and change our discussions. These were patients facing difficult therapeutic decisions. Do I take this path and take chemotherapy? Do I take this path with only endocrine therapy? What's the best choice for me? That's an area where my expertise in discussing all of that data and helping them think through those discussions could be really helpful for them. We don't need to be in person, and I don't really need to examine them. If we think about that, how many other patients might be able to take advantage of the discussions and the expertise at our academic medical centers if we didn't mandate in-person visits for those consultations? Think about what this could mean for reaching underserved populations if we could find a way to make that technology available. There's a lot more to think about here than just the immediate crisis planning. And I look forward to your thoughts on what changes have you made in response to the virus, but that's been good, that you think should continue.